In Genesis chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, it reads, To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. With pain you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. Perhaps it's because of the immense joy and pain I've experienced being a parent that I've been thinking a great deal lately about how the actions of Adam and Eve, our first parents, influence our daily lives. As I've read it and heard it preached, the curse itself seems to be pretty straightforward. Women will toil in childbirth while men toil in work. I find myself wondering though, how is this ancient curse evidenced in our modern existence as we seek to work out our salvation with fear and trembling? At the very core of the curse is the act of rebellion against God. Adam and Eve were not satisfied with what their father had given them and deemed it necessary to follow their own interests. They chose to look outside of their relationship with God for fulfillment instead of trusting that he would satisfy their every need. In doing so, they broke relationship with him. The rest is history. I'm not sure if the curse, as seen in 21st century America, is only the actual pain of childbirth and hard work. I believe that we are cursed also, perhaps even more, by our desire to find satisfaction, identity, and meaning in our children and work, rather than our relationship with God. Male and female, it seems that we are endlessly striving to make a name for ourselves, whether that would be in reaching the top of the corporate ladder or parenting the next Albert Einstein. Take a look at the shelves of your local bookstore. You'll find countless resources on how to become a more effective, successful person in the world of work. A quick search on the internet can yield a wealth of information on how to best meet the physical and emotional needs of your child even before birth. The creators of these resources appeal to our deepest insecurities and deceive us into believing that if we can somehow find the secret formula, our success will be guaranteed. People typically aspire to be the absolute best at what we do, which in and of itself is a noble pursuit. Our problems begin to arise when we seek to measure our intrinsic value by our successes and failures. Contrary to what we've been told, we are not what we do. It has never defined the essence of who we are, and it never can. We have been created by a loving God to bring glory to His name in all the circumstances of our lives, and often the very circumstances that bring Him the most glory are the times of our greatest failure, times when we give up trying to work in our own power and instead allow His power to be made perfect in our weakness. The Word of God says in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9, there is nothing new under the sun. While our daily struggles may not appear in the same form as our first parents, their essence is quite similar. We often find ourselves dissatisfied with the path that God has ordained for us, which leads us to pursue our own agenda. Instead of taking our confusion and dissatisfaction to the one who knows us best, we are tempted to look outside of our relationship with God to find answers to our failures and disappointments. Reading from Mark 4, verse 19, the scripture says, We toil not against actual thorns and thistles, but against the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things that come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. We seek the forbidden fruit of this world that will never satisfy while God waits for us to come and walk with him in the cool of the day. He can meet our every need if only we would let him. So today, I want to call on you to surrender it all unto him.